Young Falong, K Global, here with the one and only Fat Prezi. Pleasure, bro. Jay Can't Rap. In the Appreciate you sliding, brother. Hell yeah. Y'all been going crazy, bro. Um, the music, y'all got the scene on lock right now. Doing, doing a couple things. Hell yeah. The, the Squirtle Squad, that shit's a fucking, that and one, that shit's a slap, bro. Y'all really snapped and did your thing. It's a good time. Those mixtapes are a good time. Hell yeah. Y'all both, uh, Go run up these freestyles. Both of them just fucking spit some straight fire. Both y'all killed that shit. One takes. Couple, couple little bars. Hell yeah. Some of those freestyles weren't one takes. These two, I can confirm, one takes. Both of them went crazy. <laughs> both y'all went crazy, for real. So tell me a little bit. Uh, y'all y'all both be shouting out uh, AMG. What is that? Oh, yeah, AMG. That's our shit. Um, me, me, and, me and the homie Leezy started Anxiety back in... Uh, 2017 basically anxiety we just combined into like exotic with anxiety just trying to make it make it regular and known that mental health issues exist and shit like that amg was just that's the label you feel me that's anxiety music group um depending on uh how you spell it <laughs> anxiety me hint there. there's a couple other meetings for the amg hell yeah for sure. that shit's hard as fuck yeah. bro i fuck with that yes, shit yes sir both y'all got the fucking AMG tats too. That shit's hard as fuck. Oh, yeah. And the chain shit. Oh yeah. Let's go. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're talking about a Benz, you're saying AMG. Absolutely. Not. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, shit. How, how long you guys been making music? Shit, I've been making music since uh, since I was like 18, 19. So, bro, I'm bad at math. What is that? Like 2016, probably 2015, 2016. Hell yeah. Coming up on eight years. Let's go. Hell yeah. Damn near a decade in the game. Where, where are you from? Up on it. I'm from Berkeley, California, East Bay. Um, always represent Berkeley to Hell the fullest yeah. extent. Got to. Um, but I grew up in Oakland, Richmond, Pinole, all over the East Bay. Hell yeah. All over the East Bay. That's what's up, bro. I'm an East Bay native myself. That part. Yep. <laughs> Martinez, Pinole, you already know. Exactly. 925, living. Shout out Berkeley. 510. Shout out Oakland. That part. That part. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like growing up in the Bay for you? She was smooth. She was regular. You're exposed to a lot at an early age. Um, you know, as far as uh, especially things we take serious in this culture, like when it comes to music, when it comes to cannabis, when it comes to fashion, um, most of that shit was innovated in the Bay Area, right? Whether it comes from um, whether it comes from our pioneers of music, right, or our pioneers of fashion, right? With music, you got all the old school. You got Too Short, been doing it, what, almost almost 50 years in the game. You got um, Pink Dolphin really early on the wave with the fashion tip, right? Young L, The Pack, Lil B, Vans. Um, so growing up in the Bay, you get exposed to a lot of that shit early. Um, you get to kind of set the trends and catch the trends early so you can be on the next trend before everybody else, right? Um, and just a lot of regular, a regular uh, street activities. Just a lot of regular street activities. People trying to make a living. People trying to make a way. Um, but yeah, the bay definitely special. Fuck Se yeah. Seasoning sauce. Hell yeah, straight up. Stuff. Dipped yeah, in so butter. Yeah. You already know, bro. Yeah, you got some uh, straight slappers, bro. Four by four with Finesseo plug. Shout out for Shit's a banger. Um, doing things with Neff the Pharaoh. Straight yeah, slap. Yeah, yeah. Got the and one. That one stuck out to me a lot. I appreciate uh, that. The other one. What was the other one? Stomping them out in thousand dollar sneakers. Oh yeah, who wait? Shout out wave it away. Yeah, that shit's a slap, man. Right? That shit slaps. Yeah, shout out my dog. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I mean. A lot of years in the game. A lot of projects out. I think I got over twelve or thirteen projects out over the course of the eight years. Um, a lot of uh, been blessed to work with a lot of dope artists um, from the Bay Area and around the country. Um, some super dope uh, producers. Just very blessed to be in the position I'm in. Absolutely. Fuck yeah. That's dope as fuck. Mm -hmm. um, who are a few artists that you haven't worked with but you want to work with? I had a list too. <laughs> Jay, Jay knows. <laughs> um, there was only three. There was only three that I really... Uh, I mean, yeah. Well, that I that well, well, one of them I have. So the three that the three that I have to work with, or I had to work with before my career was over, right? Um, I always looked up to I Am Sue since I Fuck was a yeah. kid, right? Because I Am Sue and the HPK gang, that's what we were listening to in in in, uh, 
in high school, right? Yeah. What you listen to in high school, that's what you're going to love for the rest of your life, you feel me? So That's facts. And a lot of people still sleep on the influence I.M. Sue had on the game and everything like that. So I.M. Sue is definitely one of them. Another one was Neff the Pharaoh, and as you mentioned, I, I was blessed to uh, put, a, put a slapper together with my dog. Hell yeah. Um, but the last one is Wayne. The last one oh, is yeah. always going to be Wayne. Easy, so bro. I need the I.M. Sue verse. Me and him talked a couple times about it, but got to make that happen for sure, and then I need the Wayne feature before it's all said and done. Fuck yeah. Without a doubt. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah, that's that's dope. Is that your top three f- favorite artists as well? Um, I think I think with everybody, your top favorite artists change over time, right? Um, so it, it, they might not be what's heaviest in my rotation, like on the car ride home. Yeah, but uh, those are definitely three of some very influential individuals. Shout out Rex Live Raj, you know what I'm saying? Just yeah. Berkeley in general. Um, those three artists aren't from Berkeley, you know, but Berkeley in general, I, I, you got to pay homage to the uh, to the artists who paved the way for you. I got Loey Gino yeah. sliding tomorrow. L O E, yeah, L O E. Gino go crazy. Um, Nuki don't Nuki don't rap no more, but uh, yeah, all of them affiliated with Neff and Kill FMB and going crazy. Gino been going crazy. Oh yeah. Um, you know, he just did his pergola. Uh, yes, and that was going crazy. Um, absolutely. Another big shout out I always got to give is to my brother G Mally uh, from East Oakland. You know, he he's another one of those slept on artists who who has some real major influence in the Bay Area direction of music and. Um, I, I just want to give him his flowers. He always gave me opportunity, and he just did his uh, Pergola Freestyle as well. He, That's love. I think it's streaming everywhere right now. Go get that. G Mally Pergola. Yeah, get you all at the Pergola. <laughs> For real. It's, it's, I'm it's, trying to slide myself. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, yeah. It's on the way. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. And when we do it, it's going to be a me It's gonna be me and Jay. Hell I'm yeah. For sure, bro. Y'all I'm going Russell, crazy. Russell, tap in. What's up, brother? Hell yeah. yeah. Shout yeah. out to yeah. Russell going crazy. That really, part. Really going crazy for the Bay right now. For sure. Hell yeah, that's what's up. Yes, sir. So shit, you said uh, those aren't maybe the top three that are in your rotation for your car ride home. Who are you slapping on your car ride home? On the car ride home, bro. It's a, it's it's funny. Me and Jay, like, um, this really my brother right here. Like, we listen to a lot of the similar shit, and the spectrum is so broad. Like, the spectrum of what we slap is so broad. On this car ride home, I'll probably just press play where I left off on Spotify, bro. <laughs> um, uh, some Vezo, Rio de Young OG, Yachty. Going crazy. Um, that's what's going to be on this car right home. Unless I'm slapping Vezo. Yeah, yeah. I've been slapping Vezo. Vezo goes crazy, bro. Shout out Vezo. HM Hooper has a slap. He just slid and he has a song, a music video with. Without a doubt. What's, what's homie who. Um, what's yeah. homie who. Uh, oh, HM? Yeah. yeah, HM goes crazy. But, oh, no, okay. Oh, uh, yeah, you got to you gotta check him out. He's, he's from out here, SAC, but bro goes crazy. Oh, who Who is. Buddy who uh, did a song with Vezo, signed a Vezo's label or whatever, and Trappy was shooting all the videos for him. You remember that? Oh, the homie oh, from Blue, Oakland, bro. Blue Fetty? Blue Fetty, yeah. Shout out Blue Fetty. Oh, yeah. my, my, my manager, one of my best friends, um, Trappy, Toxic Films. Um, I remember one time we were on vacation, he was just editing a Vezo video, and that was one of the first times I ever heard him, bro. So I just I started listening to him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, the whole Michigan scene goes crazy, Michigan bro. Michigan going crazy. Shout out Michigan. Uh, we were talking love. a little bit off camera. How you, you're, yeah. you're locked in with Michigan. Explain that. How did that come about? Yeah, I'll speak on it a little bit for sure. Um, but we super tied in with Michigan. Um, and not just Detroit, not just the D. We got major love for the D, but it's all over. Bay Area, Michigan, you especially know, East Sorry, You, you know Bay. Grant Hunt? Uh-uh. Oh yeah, Saginaw. That's who I'm. I'm Saginaw, t- yeah, yeah, Saginaw. But bro's hard as fuck. I just found him. I found him Shout off IG. Shout out Saginaw, yeah, yeah. My dog JP uh, out there doing doing his thing with the Feeling Good podcast. Um, I was just I was just out there in Grand Rapids with Southside Ridge doing some doing some little extracurricular music activities and. Uh, it was a it's a good time, bro. We got love for the D. We got love for the whole Michigan, Grand Rapids, Flint, Lansing. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, when we when I was talking with Jay like a week or two ago, um, Fro said he's locked in with he has songs with Primo and shit, and that's yeah. like a big inspiration for me as a oh, producer. Yeah. Primo, Danny G, Primo like, go crazy, Danny G go they, crazy. They really like I, I love the three one three amp beats. A bunch of a bunch of Michigan yeah. producers set the tone for this shit. Straight up, Rolling are, uh, they're in the Rolling Stone magazine and shit. Yeah. They're going crazy, bro. They're really setting the tone. They yeah. they inspire me even with their their sample flips like that. Those. Old eighties, the Baby Tron shit. That shit's oh, yeah, hard yeah, as yeah, fuck, sure. bro. I fuck with that shit yeah. for sure. Free Toby, yeah. I'm Hell yeah. yeah. Free Toby. Till yeah. back with A. <laughs> and also Free Toby. Free Toby. <laughs> so how how long have you two met and when did you guys start making music? 
So, me and Jay started uh, linking up with music Wait. back like 2018, 16, 17. 16, 17. Well, as soon as Leezy went. Yeah. So the homie Leezy, my my brother, um, he was facing some 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 uh, legal some legal stuff going on, and. Um, when he when he was doing a little bit of time, I was in, I was controlling his Instagram and, and Jay had reached out uh, multiple times. So I had listened to his music. Shit, it's 2024, so we're talking like a long, long time ago. Um, yeah, and uh, he was dope. He was just dope. And eventually, he ended up flying out to link up with uh, all of us up in Oregon where we were living at the time. And me and him knocked out Squirtle Squad One, and the rest is history. Oh yeah, it. what year was that? Squirrel Squad 1, bro? 2020? Yeah. Hell yeah. 2020. It's like four years ago. Shit slaps. Four years ago, yeah. Yeah, y'all going Squirrel Squad 3 ready. We just, we just kind of teasing y'all. Squirrel Squad 3 on the way. Hell point. yeah. The show's already done. Absolutely. Yeah. Without a doubt. And um, <laughs> so you, you're you running a, um, the label AMG. What's what's your producer situation like? How do you find beats and are you, are you do you sign producers? All of the above, and it's deep. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, Miles, we got another one. Shout out Miles 07. That's my brother, producer. We've been locked in since 2016. We all met, me, him, um, our engineer Fitz, Leezy. A lot of us met out in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana back in 2016, and um, just been locked in ever since. So Miles is a producer who, who really helped found AMG. And um, Fitz is our engineer that mixes and masters everything that we put out, all of our artists. And when it comes to producers, we work with everybody. We work with everybody we fuck with. And, um, you know, if you're on the label, you probably get a better price. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Without That's what's up. Hell yeah. yeah. Nah, you guys are going crazy. It's, it's inspiring to see, bro. That's what's up. Appreciate that, that game. Nah, it is, because I'm really... I'm trying to get my shit going and fucking sign a couple here and there too. That's oh it's inspiring to see like live in action. You guys are going crazy. Oh god, absolutely, um, bro. What uh, what do you got planned for the future as far as music wise? Music, right? Um, the way the way me and Lizzy always looked at me and Lizzy when we started this shit, it was um, it was with the Trap House Vibes mixtape series. So me and him recorded Trap House Vibes when we was sleeping on the floor. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we came a long way from there. So what, what the way me and him look at it is we just do this music for, for the fun of it, for the passion of it when it comes to me and him. But we have a lot of artists that we want to see flourish. Hell you know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, Jason, to the right of me, you feel me? He, he got potential. I mean, the ceiling is, is uncapped, and he just likes to rap. So I want to see what he does. You know what I'm saying? I want to see what the homie David the Scholar does. You know what I'm saying? I want to see what all of the little homies do. You know what I'm saying? All the big homies, whoever want to fuck with us, whoever want to hop on the team and put some music together and take your shit seriously, I want to put resources behind them, and I want to help them get theirs. It's better to eat together than, you know what I'm saying, starve alone. Fuck yeah, that's definitely, bro. That's dope. You got to, you're building a dope ass team or it's already built and you're just fucking. It's out of doubt. Yeah, just keep building on it. That's fucking awesome, man. Got to be open to working with everybody. If you're not open and you got things that are holding you back, um, whether it be political tie-ups or just things that don't don't have anything to do with the music or the craft or the money, you're you're shooting yourself in the foot. It's not it's not a good look. A lot of people do that in Northern California. Definitely. Yeah. Um, what are some of your influences outside of music? Everybody who ever got some paper. Hell yeah. Straight up. Everybody who ever got some paper. I don't really care about too much else. I don't, I don't, your values, your morals, that's, that comes down to the man. You know what I mean? Every man's going to have different values and morals. But if you knew how to run up a bag, I want to study how you did that. I want to replicate that. I want to see how you ran up a bag. So influences outside of music, I don't know. Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Jeff yeah. Bezos. You know what I'm saying? No, like, I fuck with that. That's all. That's, that's like that's all with that. Shit. For yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, good question, too. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying, bro. Uh, that's a good question, for sure. Most of my interviews be boring. I like this one, bro. This I just is, try to vibe. You, I just try to go right, with the vibe, bro. You ask I'm the like, right questions, gang. I had nothing wrote, written down, so sometimes you have to give me a sec to think. No, no, no. I think the people watching appreciate that shit. Hell too, yeah, not for surely. Sure. Because I tried going off the off the list, and it's not as authentic. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. I like, I like to just flow. And that's why some are longer Absolutely. and some are shorter, because some people are 
you know, like they're more yeah. shy and not trying to give it all, but uh, yeah, 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 most definitely. Well, you know what? I, I remember watching the um, Pee Wee Longway interview that he did with Vlad, and when he would ask him questions about like his gang affiliations or things of that nature, he would just, you can answer in whatever way you want, and you can make the interview <laughs> yeah. entertaining, informative, whatever you want the, the point of the, the content to yeah. be. You could gear it towards that. So I feel like people doing the interviews ask anything bro because it's on me if i fuck up with the answer yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. so i appreciate said, i just it, like the color blue i just like yeah. the color it's just a nice color my it's boy you know what I'm saying? Nah, i went on an interview they were hitting me with like <laughs> they were hitting me with zoom in the camera right here they're like uh name a red flag out of a what's what's a red flag for a, in a girl you asking me right yeah now? Oh shit! Bro. They hit me on the spot, Damn. zoomed in the camera. I'm like, oh shit! Damn. A red flag, bro. And it took me a minute. What'd you say, bro? I said you some dumb shit. Said I said, said some dumb shit. shit. I don't even want them to post the shit. If you're seeing this, don't even post that shit because I'm not. <laughs> I'm not finna. I'm not finna push that interview because I was like, that you, shit was you weak. Hear her nails tap on the screen. Oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. I'm gonna stamp that. She's spending more on her nails than she is on her car maintenance. And if she not spending it, some other dude spending it. Right. That's good. That's good. That's good. I'm just saying. No, no, that was good. That. You smart for that. That was good. That was good, bro. That's right. better than my answer off the top. I'm just saying, we got priorities. Hell yeah. No, straight up, straight up. Um two more. Shit, bro. We gotta get you that wheezy verse. Oh, shout out Wayne, bro. I can't wait. Hell yeah. This fool that I had on here had you gotta lock in with Stunna Beats. You know Stunna? I don't think so, bro. Either you uh he's about to he's finna come on either tomorrow or next weekend, but um Bro produced for Lil Wayne a few a few tracks. Oh, that's what's And um, he had a he had an open verse he threw to another artist out here in Sac. That's Did crazy. He, yeah, a cleared verse, cleared. Wow. On crazy. a cleared verse on a stun a stun of beats, his beat with a cleared Wayne verse didn't ever see the light of day. So he threw it to the boy. That's, that's so wild. And that shit's bro. crazy. That's before no AI shit. I, th I listened to it and it's a slap, bro. It was I was the like, right place yeah. at the right time. Straight up, crazy as fuck. I want to be in the studio with Wayne, bro. Yeah, no, for surely, bro. Uh, Off tops. I n I'm not gonna say any names, but I know a. I had another producer on here, that's dropping an album and he's got Wheezy on it. Bro, so our, our producer Miles 07, he uh he got a song uh, that Sada Baby got on. No shit. Yeah. That's hard as fuck. And he'd be really tapped in. Like actually, we heard uh, the on the radar freestyle. We thought it was fucking uh, Benny the Butcher. Uh, he, it's, yeah, it, I know it Benny. Miles's, it was Miles's beat tag. Oh uh, no shit! But it wasn't Miles. <laughs> so they stole his beat tag. Somebody was using someone's beat tag. Yeah, because people do that just to get it. sales and shit. Sometimes, bro. Like I don't think that's. I don't, I don't think that's what happened. Right. It's but, not. Nah, just people trying to use the same beat tag. I think we all just think we're cleverer than we are. What, what's the beat tag? Somebody Spider -Man. was, uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, so you, can, you gotta, you Somebody gotta, was yelling Miles. Yeah, yeah, oh, just, oh, it's from the spot. You gotta, you gotta get that authentic shit. I just threw some sure. new beat tags right now. Oh yeah, you got hella beat tags. I just threw some more, like three right now, um, last week, because I was like, fuck, I need some, I need some new beat tags. I feel like every year I'm gonna come out with a new beat tag just to keep my shit fresh. <laughs> feel me? Because I feel like I don't know. It kind of stamps your, your, your era. 2023, I was going crazy with my. That's why we got our B tag, the anxiety right. B tag. Right. Only rapper to have a B tag. <laughs> That's hard. Mm -hmm. I fuck with that. So. Um, let's see this. Hello, what other questions we got? Uh, your favorite producer of all time. You got a favorite producer? Damn. All time or that I've worked with? All time. Um. That's a hard ass question. Right, I never because asked, I feel I, I feel it. obligated to pick someone from the Bay, but like it's probably not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a lot of crazy ones from the Bay, like Tracks a Million Recipes. There's a lot of crazy. Bro, that Tracks a Million you know what I'm uh, saying? Tell Me When to Go remix was my MySpace song. <sighs> dumb. Bet, we are dumb. We are dumb. <laughs> I bet, bro. I feel that you. shit's a slap, bro. I was you, like seventh grade slapping that shit. You got like the mechanics, bro. Crazy. You got, like, um, but honestly, Rob Lowe. some of my favorite producers was like when I am suit like P Lo is one of my favorite. Oh yeah, producers. P Lo goes crazy. Like when it comes to making beats, bro. Yeah. Like his beats were crazy, but um, like early Mozzie, you know what I'm saying June on the beat, Dave Triple M. Yeah, yeah, all of them, bro. Like the A Team, um, SoCal shit. Like Sorry Jane Ari, like Loop God. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, but shit, all time producers, bro. Like all time, all yeah, time. Yeah, like Metro Boomin, Scott Storch, just mainstream yeah, ones. Yeah, as well. yeah. Murder. Bro, I, would, I would probably, I would probably pick like like forty. You oh yeah, me? OVO. Like yeah, yeah. Bro's Cause, a legend. Because his his vision when it comes to the actual projects, like I might not pick him for my single. But I would pick him for the project. Hell every yeah. Every single time, for sure. For the single, I'd probably pick Manny Fresh. Hell yeah. I'd probably say Manny Fresh for <laughs> Hell the yeah. single. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Hell yeah. So, <laughs> shit. Uh, you told me you're getting into the cannabis game. Yeah. Um, what, what what kind of influence does cannabis have on, on you and your music? That's a great... Yeah. So, I mean, cannabis with the Bay Area... I mean, that's really, that's really who sets the culture for the entire industry, worldwide industry of cannabis, right? Um, I mean, you can't deny what Bernard did with cookies. Um, oh, yeah. When I was coming up, cookies really didn't even take over yet. We were still selling grapes, East Oakland grapes and um, Granddaddy Perps and, and- Cherry Pies. Oh, the Cherry Pies, the White Widows, the Mission Nice Guys, the Santa Cruz Lemon Trees, like all of Fire. that stuff, right? And, um, you know, NorCal, we got, Arcada and the Emerald Triangle, you got Mendocino, and you got, you know, just everywhere. You got Tahoe, you got all the innovation of weed, right? And I don't know, bro, like weed is just one of those things that goes hand in hand with the culture of music, the culture of all music. Every every musician smokes weed, bro. Yeah. You don't know a musician that don't smoke weed. That's facts. I don't care if they play in the orchestra, if they rap in, or rock stars, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's facts. Um, but what Bernard did with the with the fashion and the and the weed and the music, the way you could vertically integrate your businesses like that, that's just tight, bro. But yeah, we got we got a lot of shit coming in the cannabis space, um, a lot of dope stuff. My brother smoked Norris the forest um, up on the mountain, growing the loudest. Got a lot of uh, single source hash coming out. You know what I'm saying? Top tier flower craft cannabis. Exotic flowers that's coming. That's that's yeah. fucking hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that was well said, bro. Yeah. Um, that's straight facts. The way Burner did it, he executed it perfectly. Definitely inspiring. Without a doubt. And I know there's some discrepancies when it comes to how he's done business with people, and you know, but he's never done business with me, and I've never done business with him. So I don't like speaking on. I, I wonder that too, because like people hate when you're balling. Like yeah. he's on Forbes, you know, like you he did something right. You not if you're not informed on the subject, just don't don't speak on. I it. agree. Yeah. Um, you spoke on clothing a little bit. Yeah. Do you guys are you guys running a, a merch yeah, brand sir. or exotic apparel? Um, you feel me? We've been I've been I've been dabbling in fashion for a long time. One of my degrees is in merchandise marketing, and uh, I just always loved it. I, in high school, I watched Pink Dolphin blow up. You know, from a Chris Brown video coming out of um, you know someone's garage in Pinole. Crazy. It's a crazy thing to watch it be evaluated at $30 million when you're dreaming of a million, you know what I mean? Straight up. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of crazy stuff that happened with the with the streetwear uh, industry back when I was in high school and back, back in my early, early 20s and stuff like that. So um, we've been doing, you know, limited batches of all different types of stuff and selling out every time. We did some hats with the homie Pierre, Breaking Hearts Clothing. We did... Um, We've done some one of some some super limited run hoodies, super limited run um, bomber jackets. We've done it all because we've been doing it since 2018, 2017. Hey, same. So, That's yeah. when I started 2018. Yeah, we yeah. need an AMG K yeah, collabo, yeah. bro. Absolutely. At least for one hoodie drop. Without a doubt. A quick like. Without a doubt. Only like 30 of them things. You feel me? You feel Make me? It. Yeah. That no, would bro. sell in two. We would at least need 50. Instantly, bro. A lot of, I keep my shit 30, 30 below. Oh, like, my God. My shit 30. sell out. Like, look at that. You see that? You see the brother embroidery? And then yeah. on top of that, I got the heat press. I'm finna go crazy right wow. now. See, 30, 30 yeah. wouldn't even be enough for the friends and family. I know. You know but so I keep it high, like 100 a I piece, and then I just throw. Yeah, we do. That's, that's all I do. That's I do exactly 100 a piece, 30, and then I just. Because I, exactly I keep the demand high as fuck. And, but yeah, no, that's fucking dope as shit, bro. That's I love to hear it. I love to see. That's, that's one thing I feel like the Bay, we are fucking good at that we are good at fucking throwing the logo on the clothing we're, we're slanging oh, yeah. it out the trunk that's one thing i feel like we oh, do yeah. great bro been doing that for sure that's just hard as fuck tell me a little bit about your your writing process like you just 
came in here, I met you for five minutes, and then you just spit for like two minutes straight. How does that happen? Is that off the top of your dome? What, what inspires your lyrics, and how do you come up with that shit? That's Kaji. A, that's a good question. Um, when, it come, when it comes to like recording the lyrics, it totally depends what mood we're in. Um, a lot of the time, like if it, de it depends what kind of song you're making, what kind of what kind of vibe you're going for. If you're trying to really get the point across and and go go analytical and double and triple entendres and make it complex and with punchlines and stuff like that, I might I might spend you know 10, 20 minutes writing something. But a lot of the time, like with the Squirtle Squad series, me and Jay will get in the studio and both put on a pair right here, plug up to the Scarlet 2i2 and two sets of headphones, and we'll literally just have the engineer run that shit for seven minutes, and there will be a song by the time we're done, and we'll just go back That's and forth. That's hard. Um, so sometimes we just straight freestyle that shit. Um, sometimes we'll we'll write some, you know what I'm saying, but it's, it's nothing serious. I've never spent longer than you know thirty minutes trying but, to, trying to get something together, but most of the time my favorite way to uh, have a song come about is just to be in the studio with good people and good vibes and put the headphones on and don't write nothing and just let the beat play. And um, I know I was rapping on here, but I, I really love to put melodies on stuff, and I'll try and find the cadence and the and the tune that I want first. And then I'll get the words after. And once I put the first sentence, just the first bar down, we can punch in from there and the song gonna be done in five to 15 minutes. And it's just tried and true. I mean, I've got over a thousand songs recorded. So that's the, that's the way I like to do it. But it's different for everybody. Um, a, lot of my, a lot of my homies like to write. Um, I know my, my brother Blue, David the Scholar, loves to write. Gets just crazy, you know what I'm saying? Tech Nine style flows and stuff like that, but Weezy will just yeah, like it took him a long time to figure out how to freestyle. When I first met Jay, he wasn't really freestyling much. The first time he tried, it was natural for him, and he freestyles all the time. Sometimes he'll write. I mean, we we switch it up. Depends. It depends what studio we're in. It depends what producers are in the room. Um, exactly what project? Oh, yeah. How are we gonna put it out? Stuff like that. For the freestyle, I definitely think like. When you land the freestyle, it's the hardest shit out because it's so natural. Yeah. Um, off topic, but how did I was curious on how we double up the headphones? Is it an adapter, or is it? It's an adapter. It's an adapter. Yep. Because I'm about to cop. I was curious about that exactly. shit. I want. <laughs> no, for real. I've been like trying to get the double on this. Like, if it's a double yeah. freestyle or bar and bar type shit. Yeah. That's perfect to know. I need to cop that adapter. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. And uh, uh, what else was I gonna say? Oh yeah, you, uh, what studios are you locked in with? Um, I mean, I've been record. I, I really just like to record myself, like uh -huh. um, at my house. I mean, at anyone's house, right? Because yeah. it doesn't take a whole lot to set up a high quality setup. Yeah. Um, and everything I record, anything anybody on my label who records something, we just send it off to Perlita Village and Fitz, and he just. He'll mix and master everything and go back and forth until it's the way we want it. We might fly out to LA and actually sit in with him and, you know, before the actual, the final product product comes out or the pro project comes out. And um, so we can record anywhere, but um, Bay Area, we've been locked in with my boy Tuck. You know what I'm saying? Tuck the thing. Oh yeah, uh, Tuck goes crazy. He's all HD bareface shit. Absolutely. Yeah, Tuck, yeah. I'm trying to get him on here to shine some light, bro. Goes that's, crazy. That's my brother. That's Hell really yeah. my brother. Oh, that's K. He'll come up here. Yeah. Yeah. No, recording. tell him to slide. Brothers goes crazy. I'm trying to get him because he's he's got legendary <laughs> hits. Oh yeah, without it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, I mean he 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 go crazy. Uh, Trappy plugged us in with him a long time ago. That's where me and Finesse recorded. Um, uh, uh, four by four, the, the whole project. Thing. Oh, we, hell yeah, that's in the president. Me and him dropped a how many songs, like eight songs or something, eight. nine songs or something like that's that. That's hard. We dropped the whole project, yeah. That's hard as uh, fuck. Long live uh, legendary Kev, you feel me? Yeah, hell yeah, that's what's up, bro. Um, so shit, what about projects coming up? Too many. Squirtle Squad 3 on the way. I'll, sp I'll speak for myself. My boy Jay always got stuff in the cut. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Prince Charming himself. But um, I got me and Raimi got a project coming. Um, we, it's going to be all Raimi beats. Prezi and Raimi on the way. Um, me and Miles coming. 
uh, Prezi Miles 07 on the way, right? Um, I got my next solo project ready to drop, even Roses Burn. Um, got that. Me and Weezy going to have something come in. We going to put the Trap House Vibe series on tape, I mean on hold for, for a little minute, and we going to drop um, – a different collab project. Me and me and Q got uh, lost in the windy willows on the way. I got it. I, it's coming. I got it all coming. It's ready. Me and Saucy Ness. You know what I'm saying? We got that project's done, ready to go. Um, just expect it. Expect to expect it, cause it's on the way, and it's a lot of it. And I got too much shit in the vault, and too many videos in the vault, and you know. I'm gonna let it go. That's hard as fuck. Hell yeah. So. No, that's the way to do it. Line that. Sh I'm trying the same way. Like, yeah. have that shit lined up so you're working on next year while everyone's getting that exactly. shit right now. Exactly. No, we working in. We working on 2030 right now. Straight up. We got it planned out. That's yes, my next sir. question. What What are your five year goals? Bag. We care about a bag. A bag. If What's your number? Worried, if you know, it's not about a number. It's about it's about equity. Um, I don't I don't really care. I've I, I've touched six figures too many times, way too many times. That's and, hard. And spent it too many times. It's it's not hard in the bay. You know what I'm saying? It's nah, really, yeah. It's the money's out here. It's fast. Absolutely, it's fast money. I, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Fast money comes quick, but leaves in a rush. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a fucking so, rat race, right? So you feel me? You could touch a lot of cash. I'm not trying to touch a lot of cash. I'm trying to make sure my net worth is straight so my son don't ever have to worry about nothing. You feel me? So yeah. I'm trying to make sure everybody got a house and everybody's mama got a house. I'm trying to make sure that everybody got the car that they need to get the job done. You feel me? I'm trying to make sure people are building up their, their Roth IRAs and their 401ks and tucking money up for a rainy day and... You know what I'm saying? Putting money away for their kids. You know what I'm saying? All types of shit, bro. That those are the goals. Five years specifically. Um, I like to see the label flourishing. I'd like to see a lot, a lot of artists going crazy on the label. I'd like to see uh, uh, the clothing line doing regular drops and collaborations with some major partners. I'd like to see, um, I'd like to see at least ten properties in my portfolio. I'd like to see, um, you know, I got a list, brother. I'd no, like, definitely. Yeah, this is exactly I'd what like I wanted to, to hear, and I'd I love like it. To see it all, my brother Weezy been working on a cognac line for a very long time. That's gonna come. Um, I'd like to see the cannabis line continue to flourish. Um, I just want all my brothers to get a bag and stay healthy. And I want to keep getting the bag and staying healthy and, you know what I'm saying, making the right decisions for our families. Without a doubt, that street shit overrated. But you could try it. Well said. No, I, I fuck with that so heavy because, like, some people, so I ask that question and some people just, like, uh, they don't even think that far ahead. Because people ain't planned on, here's the thing, here's the thing that people talk about, that people don't talk about, right? If you are 20-something, and you're from the Bay or you're from a place like the Bay and you're blessed enough to be sitting in a position like I'm sitting in, that means you beat a whole lot of odds and you got a whole lot of dead friends and you've seen a whole lot of things that make you real grateful to be here. And it makes you realize that people are living on borrowed time. So I'm on my second, third or fourth life and I think most of my brothers would agree. And at a certain point, you just got to throw all the other shit away and realize that you might live a very long time, even though when you're a kid, you think you might die young or you think you might throw your life away and go to jail. Well, you're 20 something and you out here figure out something oh, productive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when people don't think about five years, 10 years, 20 years, that just shows me that you, you, you're not thinking about tomorrow. You're not thinking about waking up. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, I think all of us have felt at one point or another that you know, oh, I'm going to die young. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to be out here in the streets. I'm going to turn up, do this, do that. I'm the baddest woo wop. You're not. There's always someone badder, okay? I'm not the baddest man on the planet. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a man. And uh, you got to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you're going to stay in the same position. You don't want to be in the same position. Never. I don't care if it's two steps forward, one step back every day for the rest of your life. At least you're moving. Without a doubt. I like how you said that, how you, how you said, just that what you said, but even before t talking about, it's not about a number. Right. It's not about a number. And you, you listed right. off a lot of stuff. And ones that stuck out to me that I, I personally live by myself is real estate, the 401k, the Roth. Right. That's, 
where did you learn about that shit? And are you invested in those things right now yourself? That's a great question. Um, I think for one, we need to recognize that um, we don't teach our kids about financial literacy. Um, when, it, when if you if you went to a public school in this country, they probably didn't teach you about financial literacy. So if you learn something about financial literacy, you were blessed to have parents or a caretaker or a guardian that cared. And I had a loving mother and father, um, you know what I'm saying, who did a great job raising me. They weren't together and they did their best and, you know, everybody's got a story, but they did a fantastic job raising mm -hmm. me and um, they instilled mm -hmm. different pieces of financial literacy in me. And, um, you know, my father was a teacher my whole life, so I know how to, I've watched him budget. You know, you pay you pay the rent, you pay the this, you pay the that. Um, I, my mom owned a restaurant my entire life, so I watched her, you know, balance the, balance the books and figure it out and, uh, you know, recessions and go through turmoil and trials and tribulations and things like that. And most of my brothers know what it's like to struggle financially. And we don't want to have our kids going through the same things. We don't want to. We don't want them to see houses being foreclosed on, and um, you know what I mean. Um, having to having to worry about turning the heat on and not being able to afford the things that you know make you feel make you feel basic basic comforts. You know what I mean. Um, so you're gonna teach yourself because school's not gonna teach you. Um, that's that's first and foremost. They don't teach you about they don't teach you about money, and they don't teach you about uh, politics. Because if you were educated on politics and money, well then they'd be in trouble. Because yep. then you'd learn how to vote, and then you'd learn how to spend your money, and you'd know what your dollar meant. Mm -hmm. That's 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 some knowledge right there. And I think like a lot of people don't know that stuff. I didn't know it really. Like no one really. You're blessed to learn it. But I think even yeah. just saying it like right now, someone watching this. We'll go look up what is a Roth, you know? Oh, what, yeah, for what sure. is a Roth IRA? Absolutely. What is a 401k? How do I start it? Um, real estate, how to get started in real estate. What mm -hmm. advice would you give someone? Uh, a, a teenager growing up in the Bay today, no bread. Yeah. What advice would you give them? I'm going I'm to I'm I'm take this two different directions. Uh, remind me of that question because that's what I, what yeah. I, what I would tell the teenager. Yep. But first, I want a conversation that I had with my big brother, Finesse, who we've discussed in this interview. Um, you know what I'm saying? He did time, so he went away. And he wasn't out here uh, learning about financial literacy. He was having to survive, you know what I'm saying, do what he had to do um, to make it home to his family, to be a provider, right? And the first, some of the first conversations we had in the studio were about financial literacy and about how, I mean, I was 21 years old. I didn't have bad credit. I had no credit. Nobody teaches you about credit or how to manage it or what it could do for you or how you could gain assets with it or what to do with money that you could be putting aside. People just say, save, save, save. None of that means anything, right? So back to your question, what would I tell a teenager in the Bay Area? Yeah. When you turn 14, you could get your work permit. It looks great on a college application. If you don't want to go to college, it looks great on a resume. Go get your work permit as soon as you turn 14. Um, make sure your grades are good so your parents don't have a problem with you going to get that work permit and then go get a fucking job. You know what I'm saying? Excuse my language, but go get a job. I don't care if it's at 7-Eleven, a restaurant, learn how to wait tables, learn how to bust dishes, um, learn how to run a cash register, you know what I'm saying? And have four years of work experience before you get out of high school. You feel what I'm saying? Save that money up because you could work hard as hell, get a 4.0, and they still might not give you that scholarship. So if you save up and you pair it with different things, you could probably still get a degree if that's what you want to do. And if not, you could take it and invest in whatever it is you're looking into invest in. Um, max out your IRA, you know what I'm saying? Get that compounding interest, get a regular job, put the money aside every single month. And when it's time to retire, you'll have a couple million to sit on. Um, but you got to start young and you have to train yourself and it's hard. And, you know, it's real, real hard. You got to prioritize things that people, people, the problem, the problem is people want to have things that people have in their 40s, but they're 19 years old. You know what I mean? Yeah. They see somebody with a, with a hundred thousand dollar truck and a million dollar house. They acquired that over 20 years of hard work. You know what I mean? They didn't, they didn't get that when they were a kid. You or their I mean? parents exactly. are funding their lifestyle. Exactly, without a doubt. So if you're getting it on your own and you're really trying to do it, um, that's what I recommend. The other thing I would recommend is make sure you have a team. 
you can't you work 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 smarter, not harder. You know what I'm saying? Have a team around you. Make sure there's people you could trust. You know what I'm saying? Make sure nobody's a snake. You know what I'm saying? Mow the lawn, rake the leaves. Make sure there's nobody in there trying to prey on your downfall. And if everybody pulls their resources, y'all gonna be much stronger together than 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 not. Um, when we like I said, when me and Lizzie started, me and Lizzie Q, you know, Schmuck Norris, the homies. We were sleeping on the floor, and not one person has slept on the floor in a very, very long time. And uh, we're having our way. We're, we're, ha- the, we're having a good time out here. Um, uh, there's a couple <laughs> things I want to touch on. You said you 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 said get a job. That's something that's so almost looked down upon for for younger people. Even my like my, right now, my mindset's like oh, I just want to. I work yeah. a nine to five. You feel me? Yeah. I work to fund my shit and. Yeah. Um, I reinvest in myself, but you know, like I'm trying to fucking retire myself and get out of a nine to five and do this kind of stuff full time. I think it's important that you touch, touched on that and just mention that, get a job, stack your bread. Um, another thing you said is, um, watch out for snakes, build a team with people you can trust. What are some things, how, how can you, how can you see a snake? How, you say mow the lawn. Is there a way? Do you, are you giving out tests, or is there a way, or is it trial by error? And once that person burns the bridge, then it's move on. You got to have a heart, right? If you don't have a heart, that means you lack empathy. That means you're a sociopath. There's a definition for it. Um, if you have empathy, when you run into people, you're going to be able to put yourself in their shoes, and you're going to be able to feel their hardships as if they were your own. Um, and I got a big heart and everybody who's ever dealt with me, um, you know what I'm saying, will, will, will testify to that. And, um, you know, you want to be generous. You want to see other people win. And I think you got to be real careful with second chances. Um, you put people in a position to win and uh, maybe they have an opportunity to, to throw you an alley-oop and they don't. Okay. You see their true intentions. You move on. Never wish anyone ill. I don't have no opposition that I wish ill upon. I don't wish death upon you. I don't wish poverty upon you. I wish that you stay the fuck away from me. Um, I wish that our paths never cross. If I go to Disneyland, I hope you're there the next weekend. (laughs) Um, I don't wish ill upon anyone. Um, Lil Blood, he preaches Usulama, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I, I absolutely will protect what's mine. And that's just because of what I've been through. And I think a lot of grown men feel that way. Um, whether you're in the streets politicking or not, at the end of the day, I'm, I make music, and I'm and I'm in the industry that deals with a lot of um, very spunky political situations. So I need to take what comes with that and move accordingly. And so does everybody around me. But um, other than that, it is what it is. Very well said. Um, another gem that I've never even heard of that you gave was the work permit. That's that's. That's some shit I never heard of. I didn't even know that. I'm from, you feel me? Well, my brother over here from Las Cruces, New Mexico, you feel me? So that just goes to show this is a federal thing. You feel me? No, I don't care if you live in Alaska, Hawaii, New York. When you turn 14, and, and, and the reason I mentioned the grades is because, you know, you're, whoever's taking care of you, I hope you're not taking care of yourself when you're 14. It's too young. You know what I'm saying? But if you have to just follow these guidelines, you know what I'm saying? But I hope whoever's taking care of you wants you to put school first, you know what I'm saying? Because even if you're not learning what you're going to use in life in school, what school demonstrates to yourself and the rest of the world is that you're able to follow through on your commitments. You feel what I'm saying? If you told your parents, if you told yourself and you told the world that you're going to do something for four years, come out on the other side, meet all the requirements, that shows that you could be relied upon. That shows that you're an adult. That's the true reason to go to school. Very few people are going to go to school because it's required of the profession. Whether you're you're either a doctor or a lawyer, if you're doing that, or some type of astrophysicist, scientist, something like that. But metal workers, the people who, who run the world, make the world go, you know what I mean? Real workers, they're just, they're just demonstrating you could do that. And the reason I mention that is because you shouldn't go get a work permit if you're fucking up in school. You feel what I'm saying? If you're 14 years old and you're focused on the streets, understand where that leads. That leads to death or prison every single time. Um, very, very few don't end in death or prison. You know what I'm saying? So focus on school. Get the work permit. 
working is a is a um, what you call it? It's a honorable. Uh, I yeah, think. yeah, but, but but what I'm trying to say is like a. a like, I don't allow you to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a, it's a privilege. It's, thank you, brother. That's the word I was thinking of. Like, working is a privilege when you're 14 years old. So handle your business in school. Get that work permit. Get your, get your resume up. Always speak well. Learn how to write. Learn how to communicate. Learn how to code switch. Learn how to talk to the dude on your block who's, who's re-rocking that, that yayo every single day. And learn how to speak to somebody who stands up straight with a, with a tie and a suit on. And, and you're going to go far in the world. Absolutely. That's gems. That's straight mm-hmm. sauce. You got to chop that shit up for show, bro. <laughs> no, for real, bro. This is the sauce that people need to hear. They be chopping my interviews yeah, up. No, they stay chopping surely. my interviews up. They uh, put a little 30-second one For surely, bro, because people need to hear this. This is sauce that <laughs> I, I never heard about the word permit. That's awesome. Bro. Is that um, Another thing, you, you talk about school and how it's important. Yeah. What school in your experience? Did you uh, graduate high school? Did you, you said you got a degree in something? Can you speak a little bit on on your experience with school? Absolutely. I think more. I think more rappers or street dudes should should be honest about working nine to fives, um, going to school, things of that nature. Um, junior year high school, I, I was I was ready to drop out and I was ready to go that route and and you know I, I would have done fine for the moment. Um, thank God, you know I had again I had good parents and I had some big homies who you know, would push me into the studio instead of being in the streets and things of that nature. Um, so, you know, coming from junior year, I had under a 2.0 GPA. Coming out of high school, I had a 2.97. Um, I I was I applied to colleges, got into colleges, decided not to go. Um, ended up going, getting kicked out, all types of stuff. But uh, I'm 26 now, so I got a couple oh, years yeah. on me, feeling oh, like yeah. feeling like an old man. You know what I'm saying? My baby boy turns uh, five months tomorrow. Congratulations! Thank That's you, brother. fucking dope, brother. Thank you, brother. And uh, yeah, I did end up getting my degrees. So um, I got a couple a couple associates degrees, um, one in business and one in uh, social behavioral studies. And then I went on to uh, Oregon State, where where I finished up my bachelor's. And, That's uh, hard, bro. Congratulations! Thank That's you, huge. That's Appreciate huge. that. Because I think that gets spoken on a little bit more, too. Like, how important it is, bro. Because the amount... I I don't know. I have my bachelor's as well. And I got yeah. blessed with sports to be able to... I probably would not have gotten if it w- yeah. wasn't for football. And that was kind of my ticket out. But yeah. the amount of... I wouldn't even say what I learned in college. I did learn, like, Final Cut Pro. And I was behind the camera. That was cool. Right. I learned basics of this shit. And then... But mostly, like you said... the the world will look at you a little different. Right. And that, that like, they, they'll, they'll, they'll think, oh, this guy can follow through. And they might exactly. give you the benefit of the doubt or the, the chance over someone that doesn't have that, even if the other person's more capable. And that's something I, I've just noticed. And I think it's important to speak on that yeah. factor. Absolutely. I mean, I, the rappers that have that have gone to college, I think I think should speak up. Um, C Five from North Oakland is a amazing artist, um, and I'm pretty sure he graduated from from a Cal State school. And um, you know, there's a bunch of really dope artists. You know, G Easy went to went to college. You know what I'm saying? Know that. He's from he's from Berkeley. You feel me? Like, um, Crayshon dropped out of Cal. You know, when her song. I did blew not up. know that. You know what I'm saying? A bunch a bunch of these artists have have gone to college and gotten their degrees and let me tell you music is my passion and music is what i do for for the love of it but i'm not stupid and i'm not planning on feeding my my son 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 sons off of off of albums i made yeah you seem like 100k is two hundred dollars you're like bro 100k streams or some shit is like 200 bucks i'm not tripping that's crazy dude if i drop an album tomorrow and it does 20 streams i'll be i'll be fine bro yeah you know what i'm saying because because we we eat we make sure that we're gonna eat and um we just i gotta touch on this that's one advantage i have in this producer game, bro. Yeah. A lot of these producers do this. A lot of the ones that I've met and interviewed, I don't, I'm not throwing shade, but I'm just saying this is my advantage is I have bread outside of producing so yeah. I can negotiate. I, I, I can really, when I say work with all budgets, I really can. And if yeah. I'll work off 50-50 back-end splits and yeah. get the free up front because I'm not tripping off the bread, really. I'm looking at it. I love it, first of all. And the the catalog game is kind of how I'm yeah. looking at it, less as, as the, the exclusive bread up front. So it's funny that you bring up that 50-50 shit, right? So this is something I've spoken on. Um, Go ahead, you're good. Okay. This is something I've spoken on many, many times. 
but I don't know if I've done it in an interview, is the producer artist dynamic to me is fucked up. I don't think it's correct. And let me explain. Let's, yeah, speak yeah. on that. Let me explain why. So if you're a rapper or not even a rapper, if you're the vocalist, right? If you're the if you're the the vocal artist, everything falls on you, right? So if you want to make it as a vocal artist, every single fee that is incurred to pursue this process is going to fall upon you and those fees add up for people who think that they don't right you're throwing a minimum of 500 to the videographer um a lot of these producers want anywhere between 50 and a thousand per beat right um and then studio you got, time and the studio time 60 an hour right and then mixing and mastering and then you're paying the man to make the cover art and then you got to do the animation and then you're paying the blog to repost it and then you're doing the marketing Promo, and the promotion yep. and all of this shit and people don't realize if somebody releases a single and you really want it to do well you shouldn't be spending less than five ten thousand on it you know what i'm saying yeah um so when i was coming up right and producers would try and charge me for shit i'd be like and I don't, I, I love working with my producers and I don't mean any shade, but it's like, brother, without me, your song would be a beat and it would stay a beat on your hard drive forever. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You and, and if every artist would unite and come the same, you feel me? The way producers unite and come and demand what they're worth. Yeah. I think artists would be able to get a bag because it's much harder. It's much harder to get money for a feature than it is to get money for a beat. And people always think that a feature price should be way higher than a beat price, when in reality, it probably takes both of us the same amount of effort for me to make your beat into a song than it did for you to make the beat. It's two people to come together. And that's why I love that you spoke on the 50-50 profit split, because that's what it should be with every single producer and artist. But with me, if you come into me and you're talking about 50-50 profit splits and your name and notoriety isn't bringing a whole bunch of shit and we're kind of on equal playing fields... I'm not paying you for the beat. Yeah. Because we're splitting those profits on the back end. If you want to But give, you're cool with that. Absolutely. Hell yeah. I'm cool with that. If you want to split profits on the back end, we could do it. We could do it with the publishing. We could do yeah. it with all of that. But you're not getting a dime out of me. And I also have no problem paying you up front. But if I pay you up front and my song does 10 times platinum, don't come crying to me when you're broke ass at home with the $50 I paid you for the beat. You that's fair. I respect that. And no, that's just the that. way I always looked at the, it. The beat game is fucked up. It Becoming is what it like, is. I've been an artist. I've been an artist since, you know, since I was like probably six years now, rapping, right. rapping. But I recently been in my producer bag and I'm learning more about this producer game. And, right. and it's a whole, because um, I used to just do the YouTube beats type shit, like snatch right. them and rip them and never really paid for it. I was I just can, never I could say I've never done that <laughs> I was just like I, I, was, I wasn't I wasn't throwing it on uh, streaming <laughs> I was just throwing them on YouTube and SoundCloud and shit oh shit not making bread I was just doing it for the love of it oh, yeah. and um but now that I'm getting serious because I have all these old songs I want to drop and I can't even find the fucking producers or the beats and shit and I'm like fuck it I'm scratching it I'm starting fresh mm -hmm. but now like dropping my own project I've found that artists are First of all, shout out all the artists. They're fucking dope, and they fuck with me heavier as a producer. Like, for example, you fuck with my beat. If if I'm some mid rapper, and I'm coming at you, I want you on my album. Like, you're gonna feature tax me. But as a producer with some hard ass beats, I'm more likely to get an artist to slide on that beat because it's not a feature. It's not gonna be weak, weak shit. It's just on the artist and a hard ass beat. I've noticed that I'm having a way better relationship with artists sliding on my beats. And like I'm dropping my own project, so I'm doing everything. The cover art, right. the promo. I'm, I'm backing it as a producer. Right. I'm finna do the two-for-one music videos to this guy throwing 500 for a video to get two artists on my album. You feel me? Like I'm finna do it all back in. And, and it's just a different... Um, I don't know where I was going with that, but it is a different game. It's a different game with the beats right now. I think it's fucked up. I think, I think the game should be a little more... I feel like building the catalog in the long game, getting that 50-50 splits with the fucking artists that you think see fit. Right. And I try to work with people that I genuinely fuck with their music. Right. I'm not just throwing random beats to random artists. Like, and it should be an investment. It should yeah. be an investment on both parties, yep. right? I'm investing in you because I want your brand to expand. I want people to hear our song and be like, damn, who made that beat? But I also want my brand to expand and for me to be able to book shows and be able to sell features and be able to uh, put on for the other artists under me and, and, and making room and money and opportunities for everybody else. It should just be a partnership. There's no reason we should put one above the other and also the same goes because once you start go down this road 
you could talk about videographers, exactly, right? and you engineers, could talk about engineers, yeah. and people were right. So in reality, every single person should have their own label. It should be independent, and all your homies. What about how La Russell's doing it? He's giving exactly. He's breaking off each song, like giving percentages to each play, person that plays a part. That's kind of mean. Well, that's that's basically what labels do, except they keep it all. That's true. So he's literally just acting as the label. He's acting as an LLC, as a, not yeah. even an LLC, a C corp or an S corp. Yeah. And he's selling shares of himself. He's, yeah. He's public. You know what I'm saying? He's he made his own stock market I mean, straight up if you want to do it that way that's genius you feel me and it might be right for the times we're in um as far as the way the record industry is set up but innovation is never going to stop right i mean elon musk started with paypal you know what i'm saying now he's Crazy. building rockets you know what i'm saying bro and i use paypal every fucking day yeah i don't know if that made sense but it made sense in my head yeah no no straight up you know what i'm saying dog? i don't use rocket ships every day even though i do you know what i'm saying whip that thing but um i use paypal hell yeah <laughs> No, straight up. I used paper. Sold it for like a billion or some shit. That man made off of that sale. He made he took home three hundred million. Crazy, bro. McLaren F one and left his first wife. Crazy. <laughs> that's what he did. I got. Uh, that's what, what he did. Sorry, this just popped in my head. But what? What? What do you see to sign an artist? Like, if you were gonna sign some, like, what are some qualities you're looking for? Is it just talent? What What are you looking for when you sign an artist? I literally said in a song, talent's cheap, work comes first, then success comes next, every single time. You could be the most hardest talented artist in the world, but if you're not working at the music, it's not gonna pan out for you. Um, I got I got a homie in mind right now, I'm not, I'm not gonna say, but like, he is literally, literally my favorite rapper of all time, right? You know what, I'm gonna shout him out, because it's my brother, Keen the Dream. Oh, I yeah. look up one Keen the Dream, you know what I'm saying, from Petrero Hill. And from Richmond, you know what I'm saying? The hardest ever, bro. But he he focused on what he's focused on. So he's not making music every day. I mean, when he wants to push, he'll push. And when he doesn't want to push, he doesn't push because he's got the luxury to do that. You feel me? Um, so when I'm looking at an artist to sign is it's not the talent because you could be the most talented person in the world. But if, if you're doing something else and you're focused on something else, that's what you're going to be focused on. You feel me? Um, so once again, like Keen the Dream, that's that's my favorite rapper of all time. But I've never seen him like stop hustling to just focus on music. My boy's a hustler, you feel me? Yeah. He really, really does that, you feel me? So Hell yeah. um so with an artist like Jay, Jay was the first actual lyrical artist that we signed, you feel me? And with him it's a little different because we wanted him to have ownership in AMG and we wanted him to to be more of a on on the boss level of everything, right? Um, but he's a perfect example of talent mixed with the work, right? If you're willing to put that work in, if you're willing to take those trips to LA to mix a master for hours and hours and hours, if you're willing to write and adapt and work on different songs and different beats and make different sounds and you're actively reaching out and trying to work with other artists and actively trying to progress your career, I'm going to put the opportunity behind you to make yourself successful and to tack my name onto it because... I would love to help anybody who wants the help. You know what I'm saying? But you have to want it. That's what I'm looking for. You just gotta want it. That's it. Fuck yeah. That's what. That's. I feel like that's that's hella well said, and I think it's so important because there's, I know, ten way better producers and rappers than me, but they work half. I, I'm I'm up at five thirty every day cooking up a beat. You feel me? Then yeah. I head to work, and then I'm gonna come home and shoot some fucking podcast. Yeah. I'm gonna hit a studio session after this. I feel like my yeah. advantage is. I, I feel you on the hard work is always going to beat talent. Always. Every single time. Every single time. Look at all the trash rappers that are millionaires, bro. It's crazy. Every single fucking time. They make and it look easy on IG flexing, but trust me, they're fucking working. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. It's the work ethic. Um, and whenever you're ready to put the hours in, you got to turn a year into your year. And you gain that traction, and you don't, you don't slow down. Keep your foot on their neck. Mm -hmm. Um. So you you started your own label. Can you give me a quick? You don't have to go crazy detail, but how does if I if I if I want to start a label today? And I'm an artist. You said every artist should be their own label. What are the steps? You said you mentioned LLC and C Corp, S Corp. People that don't know any of that stuff. What 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 would you tell them if you had to just break down how to start a label? 
Well, that's a great question. I think um, the first thing you need to understand about any type of record label, whether it's independent, whether it's one of the majors, whether it's an indie label, or whether you're just rocking independent yourself, um, I think the first thing you need to understand is that record labels are first and foremost businesses, right? We live in America. It's a capitalistic economy, right? Um, and businesses is what makes the economy goes around. Um, so LLCs, C-Corps, S-Corps, sole proprietorships, these are just different types of businesses. Um, and the only reason they need classifications is because of how you file your taxes, right? So if you're filing your taxes and this is what you do as your main job and this is what you want to take actually seriously and you're going to be that starving artist until you come up and this is what you're doing 100% and you have some way of you're working your 9 to 5 and you're supporting yourself, um, if you have a social security number, that's your EIN. And if you guys don't know what an EIN or a tax ID number is, it's an employee identification number. And um, every single business has one. And if you are just a sole proprietor, meaning it's just you, you are the business, you don't need an EIN. It's just your social security number. Um, so every single citizen of this country, no matter where you come from, you are a business. And that's the first thing I want you to realize. Um, as far as making a record label, you have to figure out how you want it to be structured. You have to figure out what state you want it to be taxed by. You need to figure out um, what the different types of business filings get taxed by and which ones are advantageous to you. So, for example, if you're not making money, that word write-off, just forget about it because you're not making money, so you have nothing to offset. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you're still on the come up, you're going to be wanting to be a sole proprietor. Um, if you have a couple artists, you might want to be an LLC where you're the owner of or you and a couple people have ownership. How much, how much money would you consider making money? If you could support yourself. So I guess it depends what state you live in. I mean, if you're in the Bay Area, you need to be bringing in at least, you know, three to five thousand a month minimum to be able to survive. And that's really poverty. Um, if you're out in Michigan or if you're in Ohio or just somewhere where the cost of living is way less, it's going to be a different number. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to monetize being an artist, but you are a business. You are the brand. Your face is your likeness. Your name is your likeness. Anytime your music gets played, your face gets put anywhere, or your name is mentioned, you should be receiving a check. And I don't care if it's for one penny or a million dollars. Make sure you collect what's yours. Um, Make sure your business is right. So with music, it's publishing, right? Make sure you're collecting all your publishing, your song trust, your ASCAP, your BMI, whatever it is. Um, and let's not pretend like everybody out here watching this can't Google this shit. Yeah. Go on YouTube University like everybody else who Straight didn't up. have enough money to go to college and figure this shit the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Um, there's no reason anybody out here uh, cannot put the content out, cannot create the content. Um, I found that's yeah. what separates people, though. The people that search and research this shit. I'll have friends yeah. text me asking me questions that I don't know, but I could look up in five seconds. If they just would have typed the question they texted me into Google, they would have had the answer. They just don't want to read or they just want it broken down so simply or something. It would have been, yeah. And that's that's. I feel like that's what separates, like, that's what separates a lot of it. Absolutely. Is people Absolutely. that are willing to watch the YouTube videos and search through Find, they don't know what the term is, but they're going to break it down to how they can. I feel like that really separates separates a lot of you gotta the be, curve. You got to be proactive. If you're not proactive, somebody else is going to do it before you. You know what I'm saying? Early bird gets a worm. Hell yeah. And don't sleep because my boy Jay awake. Let me tell you. If you sleep, we coming. We're right there. We're, we're working harder than you. Um, when you're at home, we're working. When you're sleeping, we're dream <laughs> when you're sleeping, we're dreaming about working. Hell yeah! You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah! Um, so just make sure, make sure People you hate work. We love it, bro. I'm like, I love that I shit, love bro. It. I love that shit. I love bro. waking up, making a beat. I Ooh. love doing this shit Ooh. on my Friday night. I, I love, love this shit. I love Absolutely. hitting the studio. I'm gonna be in the studio till midnight. I fucking love it. You this know what I hate? You know what I hate? The club, bro. I yeah, hate fuck the that club, noise, bro. bro. I'm the same way. I hate the club. It's every time we go to the club, there goes five hundred dollars. You know what I'm five saying? Five hours, too. Five and, hours and of your time. you're tired as fuck the next day. It's it, whack, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do something productive. Spend time with your family. Um, you know what I'm saying? Stay away from those dangerous situations. Um, but if you out there living that life, stay, 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 move, stay move, move accordingly. Mm -hmm. Move accordingly. Last, last question. I got one more question. If All you right, hit for 10 mil right now, 
What are you going to do with it? Where are you putting mi- it? 10 mil is nothing. So up the number and ask the question again. 100 mil. But that's that's not unfair. I feel like 10 mil is a fair number. Because you have to strategically throw it around. All right. Go ahead. 10 mil, what are you doing? Um, are you talking about if somebody direct deposited Yeah, direct deposit 10 mil. Account? Are the taxes on the 10 million paid already? Yes. Okay, so basically somebody gave me like $18 million yep. and took $8 million in taxes. Yep. $10 million in my bank account yep. right now. Yep. Okay, the first thing I would do is diversify into as many different credit unions and bank accounts as I could because the FDIC only insures a bank account up to $250,000. So I'd be terrified for about five days until I had 100 different bank accounts. That's sauce right um, there. That's once, there was, once there was a quarter million diversified in all those accounts... Um, I'd probably take a quarter million, and give it to give it to uh, the homie growing growing up on the mountaintop for us. You know what I'm saying? Give it to Schmuck Norris, let him uh, do whatever he wanted to do with that. I'd probably take um, five hundred thousand, give it to Leezy so he could uh, go ahead and hurry up and get the prototypes for the liquor. Um, I'd probably buy a couple of properties um, and just start renting them out. Um, I'd buy them with a conventional loan, 20% down. I'd probably do something pretty low income, not, nothing too major, um, maybe fifty to 100000 a piece. Shoot, I still, I'm still got six, 700000 left, bro. Um, I'd probably go buy a used car, something nice, something fun. Matter of fact, I'd probably go buy six cars for me and all the homies, bro. Hell yeah. Um, but again, I'm not dropping Hellcats with ten million, bro. Like you know, I'd probably buy everybody a twenty thousand dollar car. We, yeah. we come, we come crazy. Yep. Um, I'd probably max out my Roth IRA and four hundred one k. Do that immediately. Um, shoot, my mom's house is paid off. I'd probably buy my dad a house wherever he wants. Um, I'd probably buy Jay's mom a house wherever she wants. Um, shoot, bruh. Any of the homies getting whatever they want. Everyone's credit card's getting paid off today. Um, you know what I'm saying? Probably buy the baby mama a couple things. Um, you get right back to it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, yeah. I, I'd probably do all that in a matter of five days. I probably yeah. wouldn't tell anyone I won or got the money, yeah. bro. Um I'd keep the same lawyers I have. I'd keep the same accountants I have. Um, <laughs> I'd probably even keep driving my car. Like, I wouldn't even get rid of it. But um, I did promise Jay that when we touch an M, I'd buy us matching scat packs. See, we not even greedy. We don't even want the hellies. We just want some bubble <laughs> yeah. bees, you know what I mean? We yeah. just want the scat packs. Hell just yeah. something for fun, you know what I'm saying? Um, make sure everyone's kids' college is paid for. Like, right now, put that aside. Um and if I'd be left with anywhere between three or five million, I'd just leave that in a regular old savings account, accruing, you know, four percent interest a year. Mm-hmm. Live off that while I keep on running everything else up and that's probably what I'd do. Um Fuck yeah. That's that's a hard ass answer, bro. I'd probably I probably get that. high, bro. Yeah. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. <laughs> I'd probably probably that first week, like Jeez. I think I think another thing, right, when the, when you first get the money. Yeah. Um, because I've gotten some big checks before and I feel like in everyone's life, like you have different moments like yeah. oh, that first car that you really wanted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or um or you get that girl you really yeah. wanted, you know what I'm saying? Or that that chain you really want. There's moments where it's like, um, uh, milestones, right? Yeah. If I got a, a direct deposit like that, I would probably call everybody I love and who's in my actual family, my inner circle, you know what I'm saying? Him and his people, my, Weezy, his people, Ray Q, uh, you know what I'm saying? Jesse, Schmuck, everybody. I would make sure every, we would all get on a plane and we would just go. Hell yeah. I don't know where we go, <laughs> but we'd be gone. Hell yeah. I'd probably go down to Mexico and we'd yeah. take a trappy for a week. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just did that. I just I pulled that in January. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah Balling like a king at that, brother. Bro. My brother Trappy got a whole... I'm not going to say too much because, you know what I'm saying, but... You go eat like a king out there for a little bit. Well, he bro. live out there. He's, he got another crib out there. Oh, hell yeah. And he our age. Hell you know yeah. You know what I'm saying? So... My man doing very well for himself. That's what's um, up, bro. And if y'all don't know who Toxic Films is, go type in Toxic Films. Legendary videographer in the Bay Area. Hell yeah. Shot for all your favorite rappers from the Bay and not from the Bay. That's hard. A little boosy, everybody. I mean, That's don't crazy. Really get me started. Toxic Films a goat, you know what I'm saying? Toxic. Hell yeah. Well, shit, anything else you got to touch on? Any any shout outs? Any, any gems? Plenty of interviews. We're always doing these, so I always leave some people out, but we're going to leave it at AMG, always. Um, you know what I'm saying? 
I'm glad my brother Jay next to me. Glad everybody's happy and healthy. Um, we got a lot of business moves coming, a lot of music coming. Um, you know what I'm saying? Berkeley, Till I Die, 510, East Bay, Northern California. Um, and we worldwide with this shit, bro. Hell yeah. We worldwide with this shit, bro. If you want to talk about, if you want to talk about a bag, talk to me. Um, my ears always open. Um, if you want to talk about some collaborations, whether y'all do music, clothing, um, fuck with the. We're definitely the out of talk, bro. Industry. We're global with it too. We're out in Thailand. Absolutely. I was I was living out in Thailand Absolutely. three years, bro. We locked in in the scene. They got rolling loud in Thailand. I'm trying to get on the lineup this Without year. Without a doubt, you feel me? We global with this. Hell shit. yeah. We fuck with producers from all over. Um, my boy Hayes go crazy. Produced one of my. Oh, I know Hayes. Songs. Hayes goes crazy, bro. Yeah. Quite literally. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was crazy. I fuck about, with Hayes. I don't know his beats, bro. I actually shot the, uh, the um, what, what video I shoot of his that's at like 100, 150,000 views right now. Oh, yeah. Diamond, um, in the rough. Diamond in the Rough. I shot Oh, that's a slap, bro. That was the other one I want to say. That one's a slap, bro. I was like, this shit's a slap, that's one of bro. My favorite song. Hayes Go Crazy, one of the hardest producers coming out of Europe. Um, shot in Las Cruces. Yeah, shot in Las Cruces. Oh, what is that shit? That's saying, hard, bro. That's absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's you know hard as saying? fuck. They got open carry out there, bro. We're, Hell yeah. We were having a good old time, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, Hell yeah. Shout out Las Cruces, New Mexico. Shout out Blue David the Scholar. Kale the Tax God. Shout out all my brothers from Berkeley. You know what I'm saying? Shout out all my dogs from Michigan, Florida, New York. We tied in. You know what I'm saying? Um, shout out big homie Vey Fetty. Pinky's up for life. Um, but it's AMG, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't talking about a bit. Not at all. Hell yeah. Yes. Fat Prezi, right, appreciate you, Jay. Appreciate you, bro. Oh, and crazy. Yes, Young Falon, K Global. We out. Sir.